In this video, we'll talk about the cell injury and the causes of cell injury. This is a high yield topic for USMLE step one. Stay tuned till the end of the video and don't forget to subscribe. Cell injury can be caused due to cellular stress. When cell experience stress is try to overcome the stress by doing adaptation. There are many methods of adaptation. But imagine a situation when cell can't adapt to the stress. That leads to cell injury. There could be also obnoxious stimulus that lead to cell injury. There are two kinds of cell injury, irreversible and reversible. Now in case of irreversible cell injury, the outcomes are apoptosis or necrosis. That means ultimately the death of the cell. These are extreme outcomes. But in reversible injury, there could be repair and cell can get back to normal in most of the cases. So let's talk about the causes that can lead to cell injury. In order to understand that, we have to understand things that can lead to stress. Anyway, stress can lead to, change, lead to changes in the cell. And cell can experience stress due to external or internal change in the environment. The organelles that are responsive to stress are mitochondria, ER, nucleus, and plasma membrane. There are two kind of outcomes towards stress that we already discussed, adaption to the stress or cell death. First cause of cell injury is physical damage like trauma, like radiation or let's say injury due to heat. Second cause is hypoxia, lack of oxygen. It could be due to anemia, ischemia, cardiopulmonary failure or even due to CO poisoning. These are few of the causes of hypoxic reaction. There could be immune reaction that lead to killing of the one particular cell type. There could be genetic disorders which make cells more prone to stress and decrease its ability to adoption. Now, there are several causes of cell injury which involves infection like viral infection, parasite infection, bacterial infection. There could be also nutritional imbalance that can cause cell injury. Now, cell injury often happens due to stress when it is more than the capability of adaptation. Now, the extent of injury depends on the nature of the stress. For example, neurons are sensitive to ischemic injuries than the skeletal muscle. That tells us there are cell type specific susceptibility towards a st stress. There could be also duration of the stimulus that can lead to different degree of injury. For example, slow developing ischemia and acute ischemia has different outcomes. Slow developing ischemia leads to atrophy of renal artery, whereas acute ischemia leads to renal artery embolus. So we can understand the diversity of the outcomes based on the intensity and the duration. Now let's talk about the reversible injury and its features. In case of reversible injury, ATP level drops. When ATP level drops, the pumps, the molecules that requires ATP becomes non-functional. For example, activity of calcium channels and sodium potassium ion exchange pump, their activity drops. The ribosomal or polysomal complexes that are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum gets detached under this kind of reversible injury, which leads to a decrease in protein synthesis. Anyway, plasma membrane composition can also be changed. There could be alteration in the lipid composition, blebbing, or even the membrane integrity can be compromised. Nuclear changes in, uh, in, in the nucleus, one can see the chromatin gets clumped in case of reversible injury. That's a very initial part of the injury. So overall, all these cellular and molecular changes leads to loss in cellular function. In case of irreversible injury, which is more advanced stage of injury, it, it leads to nuclear degradation. There are different stages of nuclear changes. We'll come to it. But anyway, nuclear degradation, condensation, and fragmentation of the genome. There could be rupture of the lysosome, which leads to like bursting of all the content of the lysosome, which is released in the cytoplasm, could be detrimental for the cellular physiology. There could be damages into the plasma membrane or there could be compromisation of the mitochondrial permeability. So what we learn in case of irreversible injury, the key hallmarks are loss of the electron transport chain or dysfunction of the electron transport chain, amorphous densities or inclusion bodies can be found in mitochondria. There could be chromatin condensation 
and there could be also burst of the lysosome known as autolysis. Anyway, nuclear fragmentation has different stages. This is how a healthy nucleus look like, stained in blue. In case of pycnosis, there is an irreversible condensation of the chromatin uh, and, and the nuclear nucleus actually shrinks. There could be uh, karyorexis, which leads to destructive fragmentation of the nucleus and the debris are like sp uh, sparsed all over the cytoplasm. There could be karyolysis, which is complete dissolution of the chromatin due to the action of nucleases. So these are different phases of the nuclear damage. Any of these can be underlying uh, irreversible injuries. So I hope overall this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Make sure you check out our Facebook page. Also check out our Instagram page for free notes, flashcards, etc. You can support our uh, page via super thanks you can pay via paypal upi or net banking see you in next video